video number two of the day. So continuing on, I told you I'd make a video about how to make these fittings. So this is what we were talking about. It's the nipples broke off in here. This actually is this old piece here. It rusts right there. And then when you key on for your truck to start, the fuel sprays out of there. This thing gets rusty. I showed a picture in my last video. I'll grab a quick picture when we go over to the bench to show how to do this. So this fitting was actually off of one I did a few months ago. Cut the line, put a new fitting on, snapped her on. You can try and dig these out sometimes, but I mean, look at it. It's that rusted. These two are reusable. And what I'm going to show, this is off a of 2008 Silverado. It's a common problem in Chevys. And I'm going to put one of these type of fittings on. This is a factory one for an EVAP line. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for over here. Now this one's metal. Doesn't really matter. You can put one of these on. It'll be just fine. This is another EVAP line. So you can buy these lines as sub-assemblies, but... I think this one and this one was about 200 bucks for about five feet of line maybe six and a couple connectors so it just it, it's I ended up buying this kit it's made by Dorman and it's what I use and it's worked out great it's paid for itself and I'm gonna show you how to do that so here's the new fuel pump all installed new lock ring everything's ready to go just got to get this line on so let's walk over here I have to get dizzy and the shop is trashed so here's the old fuel pump right here it's a nipple that is rusted off that's the one that we pointed to over there you can see this is a common problem on these they just rust from salt water sitting on top and that's what happens so I'm gonna set you guys up here this is the dormant kit so here is this one's and same thing still on this is the factory tube one of these fittings on the other end we're gonna put one of these fittings down here same thing and so what this is I'll go over the kit first this is the basics of the kit let me see I'm zoomed all the way out this is basically a quick clamp and I got it set up already I only use this thing a few times and so I have to read the instructions when I do it so I went ahead and pre-stage this set it up this is the fitting that we're gonna put in it's for 3 8 quick connect and 3 8 line so what we do I'll go over the kit quick so the doorman, it's 801 600. You can see there, comes with all these fittings. We'll open it up for you. Here's what it comes with. It's kind of hard to see. So these are just splices for splicing fuel lines. So let's say, let's say this line was bad cut I could cut it here splice in a piece of new line and still use the factory ends if needed that's what those type of fittings are for they come in different sizes got a bunch of them 5 16 3 8 um, and I think these are 10 millimeter so has a bunch of fittings right angle fittings this is a 10 millimeter right angle uh, 3 8 straight, 3 8 90, which is the fitting that we're going to be using, 3 8 45, 5 16 45, 90 straight, and then it has some brass splices. So I think you can go from uh, steel line, it's a compression fitting, into a press on nylon. Has some different adapters for doing different things. Whether you're um, splicing lines or doing an end like we are, comes with more of these quick connects. These are 90s, some hose, uh, another adapter, I 
think this is for 45s. I'm not sure. Haven't used that. Let me see. Does it say in there? Nope. Doesn't say. But this is a kit. I don't remember exactly how much I paid for it. It was 200 and something dollars if I remember right. Or right around 200 maybe. Yeah, that other one. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Is 45 adapter. I got the elbow connector hooked up. This is for the straight connector. So, that's it. Pretty, pretty simple thing. Now, as I'm sure many of you know, Dorman usually is junk. This kit has been pretty good. So, let's see if we can do this. I am going to cut this off. Comes with this little cutter. Let's see. I'm going to cut it off right there. I don't think I could have got closer to that steel fitting. So I'm left with a little collar on here. I'm going to get a utility knife and see if I can cut that off. Because I'm trying to save as much of the line as possible so that we're not stretching it when we get it on there. But it's not always possible. So I come back over here. Oh, tomorrow I leave to start moving six hours. Close on a house, hopefully, and it's, it's going to be fun moving a shop. I'll give a shop tour one of these days. So there's our end, cleaned up, took that extra little collar. They had an extra collar on there, I don't know, heat shrink or something. So you can lube this up if you want. I'm going to try it without lubing. Huh. So, as you can see, I'm human. I put this in like this, and the hose goes in here. So, we would have been pushing the hose into this connector, which is not how it's designed to work. So, let's try this again. This thing's kind of stuck. Bruh, let me grab a screwdriver. Trying to keep you in picture. Hmm. There you go. There we go. So you'll get to see from start, I guess. Just unscrew this wing nut. This thing comes in. So back to basics. I'm going to keep unscrewing. Keep coming up. This is how it goes in. So obviously the hose goes on that nipple. This just tightens down, holds everything in place. And I think we're there. Now there was one piece. I'll see if I need it. I can't remember if I do or not. Oh, exactly. I think this is for straights. This piece. <sighs> Don't think we need that. Sorry. So, I'm going to lock this up now. Try and keep my hands out of your way a little bit. So, this is going to loosen up. We're going to slide this in the 3 8 section. Now, the instructions that come with it say to leave double check the 90 one. This is the 90 degree fitting. Say it leaves a quarter inch sticking out of the block. So, uh, this comes, you can move this up and down depending on the size of the tubing. It's got I think, what is it, quarter, five sixteenths, and three eighths. So, I am throwing this in the three eighths slot and tighten this down. Now, this tube is on a curve. So, we're going to see how this works. Hopefully, it will work. If not, we'll have to figure it out. Like I said, I only use this a few times. 
So I got about a quarter inch sticking out. And because it's on a curve, it kind of goes like this. So as you can see, I started this. It's kind of going sideways. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to try and get in there. A little O-ring on his barb fitting. And that's what seals everything up. So let's see what we can do. I'm just going to squeeze. And it's going in. Um, I think. All right. Let's take this apart. Let's see what we got. Loosen this up. I may have to adjust it. I'm going just a bit more. But it did start to go in. I'll show you once I get it all apart. You gotta take it apart to get the fitting out. Which means all three of these pretty much. And it's a fairly simple process. Like I said, I this is probably I can count on one hand a number of times I've done this. So I have to check this out every time and make sure. So let me grab a fitting. This is the original fitting. Now I am not pushed on very far. I'm pushed on up to that first barb. I want to go all the way in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to back this off, leave this thing on, and set this up one more time, and push it just a little further. And so this backwards. Now, I know some people don't like when I sit here and talk and talk and talk, but I'm trying to give the best I can, the best how-to, I guess. Or should I be like everyone else, say this video is for educational purposes only, or not for educational purposes. So I'm going to tighten this down again, tighten this one down. Hopefully, you can still see. I am not professional youtuber by any means so please be careful be not careful please be nice to me but I am gonna line this up again and a little too tight all right so I don't think I had enough sticking out that was the problem so what I'm gonna do is just leave a little bit more Get about there. Tighten this down again. And I messed up. Put the wing nut in the wrong one. So I'm going through this. Like I said, I've only done this a handful of times. So I'm bound to make mistakes. The instructions are in there. What you want basically is one of these on each side of the tube. And I had them both on the wrong side. So tighten her down. And now we're gonna watch here again. I'm gonna tighten this down one more time. It just kind of holds things together. We're gonna watch in here and hopefully this hose something. Squeeze it. Which it did. For some reason, I think we're pretty well on. I'm going to undo this again and we'll check her again. Gotta undo all these. And what we're trying to do is get this all the way on there. So let's see where we're at. Let's get all this out. And we're pretty close. I think we could live with that, but I would like to go just a little bit further. 
I'm not sure. I think I think I need one of these other pieces. Let me try something here. Let me try something to try and stick this piece out a little further. If I can get that off. Hold on one second. Always something. So, got this off. There's one more piece. Let me just see. I don't know if that's what it's for or not. But right now, I'd like to try and get it just a hair further. And that is this piece. It doesn't say what it's for in here that I remember. I remember. Oop. I guess we throw that down there. I think that goes in there as a spacer. So this sticks out further. Let me go grab my line that is through. I thought maybe that was for the smaller ones, but maybe it's for this one also. Because it just doesn't seem like it was going, yeah. I like that a lot better, that spacer. So, let's try this one more time and we'll get it good this time. Guess I should have remembered that spacer goes in there. So this just tightens down and it holds this in place and back to these this goes on back you up hopefully you can see and these just start screwing together again caught I know my hands are in the way you can't see much but I'll explain one time one more time once I get stuff down so again this one holds it onto the bar clamp and then one of these on each side of the hose that you're putting on yeah that was my my fault for not putting that little spacer in. little spacer makes all the difference in the world we would be done and on so I am setting this up again right about there I'm going to put it, tighten that one down, tighten this one down, and then this one goes into the bar clamp. Alright, this is all tightened up. So now if you watch again, this little bit is going to get pushed up tight. Look at that. Perfect. It's amazing what happens when you put it together right. So, undo it. Last time, promise, it's all the way on. And I'll show the final result and end this video. So, at least you can learn, I guess, <laughs> from my mistakes of what can go wrong if you don't do it right. Let me show that little spacer one more time. So this is the adapters that just got, um, what do you want to call it, grooved channels in there so it holds everything tight. So here is the final picture. It's pushed all the way up, nice and sealed. It's a factory fitting. There, hopefully it focus. There you go. It's all the way up and this one's ready to go on this is the little spacer that I was missing that was causing me trouble so what this does is it goes in here just against the back of there and it pushes that nipple out I'm gonna grab a new fitting here's a fitting a new one goes in here and it just pushes that out far enough so the hose can press all the way on what I was doing it the hose was hitting the bottom of this it wasn't allowing it to go all the way on. So now that we got this little spacer in there, it went on beautifully. So here is mine. And let's go to the other end. Here's the factory one. 
looks uh, almost identical. Anyway, this is the Dorman 801-600 kit. Love the thing. Obviously, from my uh, inexperience, you can tell I don't use it that often. Now, these do spin in here, and you can orientate it how you want it. But that's how you fix a fuel line. Kit's not cheap, but it'll pay for itself if you do a couple of them. Thanks for watching.